back again. I'm the second speaker for today, who is Mira Shamis, who will speak about the abominable properties of the almost Matthew operator uh, with Leoville frequencies. Thank you very much. First of all, let me thank a couple of markers. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to the conference. It's a great pleasure to be here. Second of all, uh, I need to apologize because up until now, everything we heard was about something random. Random appeared here or there, so there will be nothing random in my talk at all, so I'm apologizing. I'm breaking the conference to half. So the work that I'm going to talk about, hopefully it will be, even without randomness, interesting. So I'm going to talk about joint work with Arthur Avila, Joram Last, who is in the audience, and Shiju. Uh, now, in this work, we study the almost Matthew operator, AMO, almost Matthew operator. This is a one-dimensional discord Schrodinger operator that is, acts on the space of square summable sequences <coughs> by H alpha lambda theta psi n. So it is a sum of the free Laplacian, of the discrete free Laplacian, and multiplication by a potential of the form 2 lambda cosine 2 pi alpha n plus theta psi n, where we have three parameters, lambda, alpha, and theta. So lambda is some real number which denotes the strength of the disorder, and it's called coupling constant. Alpha is a number between 0 and 1, which is called the frequency. And theta is some number between 0 and 2 pi, which is called the phase. Now, as you can easily see that we can always assume that lambda is positive, because otherwise it's simply shift of, uh, of, the, of theta by pi. So from now on, we assume that lambda is positive and never bother yourself with the second case. Now, it is known that the special <coughs> properties of that operator depend <coughs> sensitively on the arithmetic properties of the frequency. So for example, back in 76, Gordon proved that any uh, Schrodinger operator, which can be very well approximated by periodic operators, can only have continuous spectrum. Using this result, six years later, in 82, Abron and Simon were able to prove that a, in the so-called supercritical regime, when lambda is greater than one, if alpha, if the frequency is very well approximable by rationals, then the spectrum is a purely <coughs> singular continuous. Now, on the other hand, in the same regime, when lambda is greater than one, once again, supercritical regime, <coughs> in 99, Zhitomirska proved that for poorly approximable alphas, which satisfy certain Diophantine condition, the spectrum uh, of the Holmes matter operator is pure point for almost every phase with exponentially decaying eigenfunctions. And this immediately gave some sort of indication that there should be a phase transition between purely singular continuous spectrum and pure point spectrum. Okay? And this Phase transition is supposed to depend on the arithmetic properties of, of the frequency. Now, in 94, Zhitomirska introduced the following uh, parameter, which measures how well the frequency is approximable by, by rational numbers. Beta of alpha, which is equal to the limb soup when q tends to infinity, minus 1 over q, logarithm of minimum over p, alpha minus p over q. And there is another definition of that parameter, which is probably more familiar to some of you, which is limit limb soup when n tends to infinity of the logarithm 
uh, of q n plus 1 divided by q n, where p n over q n is a sequence of approximants of alpha, which is called the canonical sequence, which arises from the continuous fraction expansion. Okay, and then Jutomers can conjecture that the spectrum is purely singular continuous if lambda is between <coughs> 1, including 1, and e to the beta of alpha, and it is pure point if lambda is greater than e to the beta of alpha. Now, this conjecture was recently proven by Avila, Yu, and Zhu in 2017, and independently by Zhitomirska and Liu in 2018. Now, here I need to say two remarks. Yes? It's no, it's log qn plus 1 divided by qn. Okay. That's precisely the point, whether it's an exponential approximation or not. Okay? Now, uh, here I need to say two remarks about uh, what I said that it was recently proven. So, first of all, one, my small remark is that case lambda equals to 1, the so called critical case was proved uh, long ago, it's, it's not a part of that. And the second, if we're already in the business of open problems, then what is going on on the critical line e equals to, B, uh, <coughs> to the beta of alpha, it is still widely open. It's completely not obvious what's going on on the critical line. Now, the, pro the purpose of our work is to show, so we study only Liu real frequencies, only frequencies which are really well approximable by rationals. And the purpose of our work is to show that some spectral properties of the almost Mati operator with such well approximable frequencies can be very miserable. And in fact, they can be as poor as at all possible in the class of all discrete Schrodinger operators. Okay, uh, and one interesting thing uh, in, in our work is that we not only work with the supercritical case where lambda is greater than 1, but our results are actually valid also for the so-called subcritical case when lambda is smaller than 1, in which case it is known that the spectrum is purely absolutely continuous for all phases and frequencies. Now, we focus on the following properties. So first, the Hauser of measure of the spectrum. Second, the regularity of the integrated density of states and of the Lapunov exponent. And third, the homogeneity homogeneity and parovidum property of the spectrum. And I will start with the uh, house of measure of the spectrum. And in this part of the talk, when I will talk about the house of measure of the spectrum, I will concentrate only on the critical case, namely lambda equals to 1. It will be obvious in one second why. In this case, it is known, it took a long time to prove it, but today it is known that the spectrum is a counter set. of zero Lebesgue measure. Therefore, the question about its fractal dimension naturally arises. Now, back in 2016, together with Lust, we proved that um, the 
here exists a G delta dense set of frequencies such that the Hauser dimension of the spectrum of the critical almost Mati operator is equal to zero. Now, we can reformulate this question in terms of, of the Hauser measure, but first let me remind you the definition. So for a given subset of, uh, of wheels, uh, K, we define, so first I will say and then I will write, we define a T Hauser measure as follows. We cover that set by intervals of lengths at most epsilon, and then we add the T powers of the lengths, and then we take the epsilon to zero and infimum over all the covers. Okay? So we have HT K. It's a limit when the size of the interval goes to zero, infimum over all the covers, some uh, of the j powers of the t's powers of the lengths, where k is covered by these intervals, and the length of the interval, bj minus aj, is at most epsilon. Okay? And then one can easily see that the Hauser of dimension of a set is zero if and only if T Hauser of measure of a set is zero for all positive T's. Okay? And uh, there are more examples of, spec <coughs> of uh, operators with uh, with a uh, thin spectrum the spectrum zero Hauser dimension, and you, if you wish, you can see it in the paper by recent paper by Damanik and Fieldman from 2020. So, other examples with zero Hauser dimensional spectrum. Now, the natural question that we address here is the following. Can we replace this t power by a more refined scale of a gauge function? Okay? So, but for that, first, let us introduce what we call omega Hausdorff measure of a set, in which it's the same precisely definition, but for a given, mo uh, for a given function omega, we simply, instead of applying these powers to the lengths, we apply function omega to the lengths. Okay? And this we call omega Hausdorff measure of a set. And then um, it turns out that actually the right scale is not the <coughs> Hausdorff dimension, is not a T uh, Hausdorff measure of a set, but actually. The right scale is the following function, which just shows how thin the spectrum of the almost Mati operator is. So the correct scale is omega t of s equals to 1 over logarithm to the power t of 1 over s for t between 0 and infinity, and obviously define this function at, at 0 to be 0, okay? Physically define it at 0 to be 0. Now, it is known that for any Schrodinger operator of the form minus Laplacian plus the potential, the omega 1 Hausdorff measure of the spectrum is always strictly positive. And I will talk about this point in precisely three minutes from now. Okay? Now, um, in our first result, we show that this cannot actually be improved even for the almost Nazi operator. Okay? The nicest operator ever. So our theorem one states the following. So let us denote by S alpha uh, one 
the spectrum of the critical almost multi operator, then first, if alpha is very well approximable by rationals, namely if this parameter beta log limit of log qn plus one divided by qn is positive, then for any t greater than two, uh, omega t house of measure of the spectrum of the critical uh, almost multi operator is equal to zero. Now this result applies to t greater than two, and I promised you the optimal result. So in the second item, we are, I will actually show that we can push it down or up, whatever you prefer, up to omega one. So second item, if omega is any non-decreasing function with zero at zero decaying faster than omega one, <coughs> let me write that down, delta dense set of frequencies such that omega house of measure of the spectrum of the critical almost multi operator is equal to zero. Namely, we go completely down to the omega one. Are there any questions up, at, up until now? Now, Sorry? yes. What is gamma? Is it gamma there? H no, it's one? sigma. Sigma. Uh, spectrum. Oh, just h one the one. Yes, spectrum. spectrum for any uh, one what for any one dimensional discrete Schrodinger operator of the four minus Laplacian plus the potential omega one Hauser measure of the spectrum is always positive. Now, this result concerns the critical almost my operator. And I cannot start to tell you how many times I've heard, ah, okay, critical case is a very special case. Everything can go wrong in a critical case, not only in the almost Matthew, but take any model, take its critical case, everything is bad. Our next result shows that very strange, very abominable things can happen uh, for the non-critical case of the almost Matthew operator once we are dealing with low real frequencies. And the next thing that we would like I would like to concentrate on is that the regularity of the integrated density of states. But first, re let me remind you the definition of the integrated density of states. So I will call it theta average uh, density of states, which is basically the function that counts the average number of the eigenvalues up to a certain energy. Jonathan Deberg, uh, Jonathan talked about this function yesterday in his talk, so let me define it precisely. So this is the limit when n tends to infinity, one over n. The expectation, simply the integral over theta from zero to pi, of the number of the eigenvalues of the operator restricted to a finite box of size n up to e. And this applies for any alpha, whether it's rational or irrational. However, when alpha is irrational, then we can get rid of uh, this expectation, and uh, uh, it, 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 the same is true for the point-wise limit. Okay? Now, we want to know how continuous the integrated density of states is. And for that, we define a class of functions. So as before, let me first say what I'm going to write, and then I will say it. We will denote by uc omega the class 
of uniformly continuous complex valued functions with models of continuity majorated by omega for any given models of continuity omega. So, it's all f complex valued, uniformly continuous. Uh, with models of continuity modulated by omega. Okay. Now, classical result in potential theory, which is called Grossman's lemma, uh, shows that if a set has small Hausdorff measure, then it cannot support any regular measure. <coughs> and the opposite direction actually not necessarily true. So uh, basically, then we can conclude that if the house of measure of the spectrum is zero, then the integrated density of states must be irregular. Okay? Now, Forsman's <coughs> now to be a little bit more precisely says that the set has omega positive omega house of measure if and only if there exists a regular measure supported on that set with exactly that uh, models of continuity omega. Okay? So corollary from Forsman's lemma is simply that if spectrum is of omega, of zero omega house of measure, then the integrated density of states, corresponding integrated density of states, cannot be uniformly omega holder continuous. Okay? So for example, for a set of alphas from our work with last, we immediately can conclude that the integrated density of states is not uniformly uh, holder continuous for any positive exponent. So in our case, omega is simply equal to s to the t. Okay, so it's not uniformly holder continuous for any positive exponent. Now, back in 83, Craig and Simon <coughs> proved that, and this will go for that, which is very good. So I will raise that theorem and write below that. And then combination with the Postman's lemma, immediately will explain you this point. So Craig Simon, AD3, they prove that for any ergodic Schrodinger operator, uh, the corresponding integrated density of states is always log holder continuous. Always. And uh, several years later, Bourguin and Klein extended this result to non ergodic setting. And from here, you immediately see that the omega 1 Hausdorff of measure of a spectrum for any operator of this form must be strictly positive. Okay? Now, this is optimal, this result non-ergodic setting or ergodic setting, I don't really care, is optimal in the following sense. Um, in the same year, in 83, Craig, and later Gunn and Kruger in 2011, constructed examples of operators for which this cannot be improved. So this is the optimal regularity of the integrated density of states. Now, uh, so therefore, very easily, now we combine our first theorem, which is still here, with a uh, Postman's lemma, then we immediately obtain, so theorem one plus Postman's lemma, <coughs> tells you immediately that uh, log holder continuity is optimal in the critical case. Now, outside 
the critical case, such a simple consideration <coughs> do not work at all. Because the spectrum is of positive measure, so therefore, obviously, it's of uh, Hausdorff dimension equal to one, so there's nothing, no, no such a uh, simple uh, argument that can work here, okay? Now, what is known for arbitrary lambda? So for arbitrary lambda, uh, a villain Jitomer scan in 2010 pointed out that for beer generic alphas, very generic frequencies, uh, the integrated density of states <coughs> is not uniformly uh, 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 holder continuous for any positive exponent. Okay? Now, there is a completely different picture for the poorly approximable frequencies that satisfy certain Diffontine condition, in which case, in 2008, Avila, following the works of Ghost and Schlack, Avila, Jatomirska, and Borgain, showed that if alpha is poorly approximable by rationals, namely, satisfy certain Diffontine, namely, this parameter is equal to zero, then uh, the corresponding integrated density of states is always uniformly half holder continuous outside the critical case. And obviously not, not equal to zero. Now, uh, in our next result, we show that when we're dealing with the uh, wheel frequencies, low holder continuity is actually optimal for any positive lambda. Not the critical case, but for any positive lambda. So our second theorem states the following. We have three parts. So first, if lambda is between e to the 2 beta over 3 and e to the minus 2 beta over 3, then the integrated density of states is not uniformly omega t holder continuous for any t greater than 3. Now, second item, it's not yet the optimality that I promised you. In second item, we show that if we restrict a bit our assumption and make alpha be, uh, lambda between e to the beta of alpha over 2 and e to the minus beta of alpha over 2, then the integrated density of states is not uniformly omega t holder continuous for any t greater than 2. And now the last push up to omega 1 is done precisely in the same way as in first theorem. So if omega is any non-decreasing function Uh, which is 0 at 0, which decays faster than omega 1, then, and I will simply add in the previous statement, I will add here then, uh, for any lambda for any lambda there exists a G delta dense set of frequencies such that the integrated density of states is not uniformly omega holder continuous namely uh, the log holder continuity of the integrated density of states is optimal <coughs> for the almost value operator for every frequency, uh, for, uh, for every coupling. Okay? In, our, in, in the regime of arbitrary positive coupling. Okay? 
Now, to the best of our knowledge, these are the first examples of operators with almost parallel <coughs> potentials with such low regularity of the integrated density of states. And once again, an interesting feature of our construction is that in the so-called subcritical case, when lambda is smaller than one, the spectrum is purely absolutely continuous for all phases and frequencies. And moreover, as it follows from the work of uh, Avila and Damani from 2008, the integrated density of states is absolutely continuous. Okay? Now, these results imply very similar properties for the Lapunov exponent. So if you don't know what the Lapunov exponent is, just ignore me for the next two minutes. You can think of the Lapunov exponent as of a quantity which measures the exponential, it depends what you like more, the exponential growth or exponential decay of the solutions. Okay, and uh, the Lapunov exponent is connected tightly to the integrated density of states. We've seen, uh, Jan mentioned this in, in his work, uh, by a very famous formula which called uh, Taulis formula, which goes back to the work of uh, Taulis, Herbert, and Jones. Now, there is an argument in the paper of Goldstein and Schlag that allows to connect the regularity of the integrated density of states to the regularity of the Lapunov exponent. The problem is that their argument does not formally cover our omega. So we needed to generalize it a bit. So, and after we generalized it, we have the following statement for the Lapunov exponent. for any t greater than 2 if the integrated density of states is not uniformly omega t holder continuous, then the corresponding Lapunov exponent is not uniformly omega t plus 1 holder continuous. So all these results hold also for the Lapunov exponent if you simply increase uh, t by 1. Now, our last result is motivated by, by the inverse spectrum problem for quasi periodic operators, and I will not, I'm telling in advance that I will not go into too many details here. So, but what is the problem? So, the question is as follows Given a compact subset of the real line, one can ask what are the spectral properties of Jacobi operators whose spectrum coincides with that given set, with that given compact set? Sodin and Yudinsky studied this problem in back in 95 and 97 in the class of Jacobi operators with almost periodic potentials. And they proved that if the spectrum is homogeneous, which I will define in uh, five, three minutes from now, and the diagonal elements of the corresponding resolvent operator are purely imaginary on the spectrum, then the operator is almost periodic. That was the result. Now, uh, to the best of our knowledge, these and all the following works on the inverse spectral problem require either homogeneity of the spectrum, which means that it is not too meager near any point, or uh, uh, some uh, other weaker, much weaker condition, which is called the power freedom property, which basically says that the space of analytic function on its complement is sufficiently rich. Okay? Now, and then, it's very natural to ask, does the homogeneity, or at least the power freedom property, hold for simple quasi-periodic operators? For example, for the almost multi operator, what can be simpler than that? And surprisingly, the answer is no. So, uh, let me first remind you the definition of uh, homogeneous in the sense of Cartesian set. So, we call set homogeneous If there exist epsilon not and tau such that for any point in the set and any epsilon smaller than that epsilon not, the measure of the intersection 
of the epsilon neighborhood of that point with that set is not too small. Okay? So which means precisely what I said, that the set is not too meager near any point. Okay? And I will not define the property in a precise way. Apologies. Now, up until now, all the results that we are aware of, uh, Damani, Goldstein, Schlag, Boda from 2018, uh, Legal, Yu, Zhao, and Zhu from 2017, they dealt with the case of poorly approximable alphas that satisfy cert uh, certain dark time position, and they proved that the spectrum is homogeneous, and in particular, it satisfies the power of the property, which is much, much weaker. Okay? Now, recently, uh, several, couple, several years ago, Simon conjectured that the spectrum of the almost Matthew operator is homogeneous outside the critical case. So now we disprove this conjecture in the following strong sense. Let me formulate my last theorem. Maybe I will have five minutes to draw three pictures to explain you the proof. So our last theorem says that if lambda is between e to the 2 beta of alpha <coughs> over 3 and e to the 2 minus 2 beta of alpha over 3, then the spectrum of the almost multi operator is not homogeneous. And second item, we show that if we restrict our assumption a bit, now if lambda is between e to the beta of alpha over 3 and e to the minus beta of alpha over 3, then the spectrum of the almost matter operator does not satisfy the power of Eden property. Okay. And to the best of our knowledge, this, this is the first example of a, of a Roddick Schrodinger operator with spectrum of positive measure which is not only not homogeneous, but does not even satisfy the power of hidden property. In particular, this means that any solution to the inverse problem that would include the case of the almost multi operator with low field frequencies may require essentially completely new methods. <coughs> hey. okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Then in, in my last 10 minutes, I would like to tell you about, as much as I will be able to, about the key ideas in the proof of the second theorem about the regularity of the density of states of the first part, when t is greater than 3. Okay? Now, the main arguments are developed for the so-called subcritical case when lambda is smaller than 1, and then it is extended, it's a usual trick, well-known to specialists, to the uh, case of lambda greater than 1 by what is called the and duality. Okay? Now, the proof is based on the approximation of, a, of the almost periodic operators <coughs> by periodic operators. And that is where we're using very heavily the fact that alpha is very well approximable. Okay? So namely, alpha is rational. So we have periodic approximants. So let us denote for fixed phi over q and fixed phase, fixed rational frequency and fixed phase, let us denote by sigma phi over q theta the spectrum of the almost multi operator <coughs> uh, with this phase and this frequency. Now, we, from the, the well-known block uh, Floquet theory, we know precisely how, this, uh, how, this, uh, uh, how the spectrum looks like. It is a union of q closed intervals which are called bands, that are separated <coughs> by gaps. So these bands can uh, touch by the edges, but they cannot ever overlap, okay, for an individual theta. Now, first thing that we show 
is that the length of these bands cannot be exponentially small in Q. So this is the first thing that we show. So first thing is that the lengths of these bands are not exponentially small in Q. Now, when theta varies, now let us, we, we looked at the spectrum for a fixed theta. Now let us start changing theta. When theta varies, what happens to these bands? They move, and the lengths can change, so they can become larger or smaller, but it happens in such a way that once again, for the almost Matthew operator, two different bands never overlap other than at the edges. Okay? So let us move this, let us change theta. So we have these different bands, and the length may change, everything may change. Now, what we show second is that the edges move uh, by roughly lambda to the cube. Okay? Now these small intervals, where is blue, which are in the spectrum for some thetas, but not in the spectrum for the other thetas, this precisely is the main focus of our attention. Okay? So let us take one such interval, and let us take its middle part, which is half size of that interval. Okay? So let us take, we will denote I tilde, A tilde, B tilde. So once again, we are focused on the intervals which are in the spectrum for some ds and not in the spectrum for the other ds, <coughs> then we take in one such interval and take in its middle part, which is of the half size of the interval. Then we show that if alpha is sufficiently close to this p over q, then the integrated density of states of the almost ma uh, periodic operator satisfies, admits the following lower bound. Lambda to the power Q over two, one plus a little of one. Okay, <laughs> so this is the first step. On the, so, and this, <laughs> this uh, bound actually consists with the second fact because we do know that the integrated density of states has square root singularity at the edge. Okay? Now, on the other hand, we show that if, once again, alpha is sufficiently well approximable by rationals, Then the intersection of the spectrum of uh, the almost periodic, almost Matthew operator with that set is very meager. Namely, any regular measure mu regular in the sense that mu of a, a plus epsilon, is of order of one over logarithm t one over epsilon, or any t great, greater than three, assigns very little weight to it. Namely, mu of a tilde b tilde is bounded by lambda to the q over two times t minus two plus little of one. And as you can see, let me put it like that because there are some constants, 
this bound, this upper bound contradicts this lower bound, so therefore the integrated downstream states cannot be regular. So this whole proof is by contradiction. So let's assume it's regular, then we have the lower bound in any case, and then any regular measure will have to obey this upper bound, and therefore there is a contradiction to that lower bound. Now, uh, let me tell you about lower bound. I will not have uh, time for the upper bound, but for the lower bound I will have time because I think that there is one uh, statement which is of independent interest. So how do we obtain uh, the lower bound? So first of all, we work with periodic approximations. So first of all, we obtain the lower bound using all the known techniques for, uh, an indivi for the integrated density of states with an individual theta, which belongs to a large set. And then we show that the same lower bound, which is that lower bound, uh, uh, the uh, theta average integrated density of states it meets the same lower bound. And now, so we are still in the framework of the rational numbers. So now we need to pass from the rational number to the irrational number. So which means that we need some sort of continuity, some sort of statement of the continuity of the integrated density of states as a function of the frequency. And this we prove in a quite a general setting, and I think it's, it is of independent interest, and I will formulate it here, and this is how we achieve the lower bound. For the upper bound, I will need another 10 minutes, which I don't have. So for the lower bound, main statement is the following completely general statement. So let us look at almost periodic operator, general almost periodic operator. <coughs> where a phi is a two periodic function that satisfies a uniform Lipschitz condition, namely the maximum of phi of x minus phi of y divided by x minus y is bounded. Okay? Now, and we will denote uh, by an alpha as before the corresponding integrated density of states. And then we have the following proposition, which once again have nothing to do with almost my view period or completely general. Now, for any r alpha and alpha prime real numbers, and for any L greater than one, if K is greater than or equal than two pi times the Lipschitz norm of the function phi times the difference between alpha and alpha prime times L, then the integrated density of states that corresponds to the alpha prime at the point R is smaller than or equal than the integrated density of states that correspond to alpha at the point r plus k plus an arrow of order 1 over l. And when, when we apply it, so this k is approximately lambda to the power q, and this l is approximately uh, lambda to the q divided by the, the distance between alpha and p over q. So this is how it is applied. So once again, the lower bound is achieved first yeah. using the standard things about the periodic operators, and then at the last step, when one needs to pass from the periodic case to the almost periodic case, we need a continuity statement, continuity in alpha, and we prove that general proposition, which closes us the deal. And that's how lower bound works. And I will stop here. Thank you very much.
the, the dance, but I think the dance that you have said, there is no such interplay. I, I mean, the dance you have said is very nice in the Romeo case. So there is no interplay. There. You, you don't have any parameter except for the coupling constant to play with. So you only have coupling constant. Here you have this, this luxury of playing with three parameters at the same time. Yeah, but so but yet again, but yet again. So uh, the density of states is not uh, is not really depends on the distribution. That at no. least the continuity. Well, no, the 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 really yeah. So so the question is so your question is can there be a random shredding operator with such a low regularity of the density of states as as log holder? I don't know. <coughs> That's a very nice <laughs> question. I don't know. I, I can tell you one thing. Uh, before I started to work on that, I, I spoke with uh, Tom Spencer, and then he told me that, uh, so basically, that, that there's supposed to be the following theorem. So take any nice operator, and uh, take, uh, take it uh, um, lambda large enough, and then the integrate density of states is very nice. And then I brought the example of the critical almost math. And I said, okay, okay, no, no, this is cheating because the Laplace response is zero. Yeah, it's not purely that sort of thing. Spectrum, but still it's zero. And then I said, okay, let me think. And then he went and he said, okay, the conjecture should be, let us take any nice ergodic operator, let us take lambda large enough so that the Laplace exponent is positive. And then the integrated density of states will be nice. And then I disproved it with that. <laughs> so, no, I mean, in when once you are in the quasi periodic setting, you can play with so many. Uh, that's why I love this business. You can play with so many parameters, and you can either make it very nice or make it very, very, very bad. <laughs>